I haven't stopped giving thanks to God for you. And I remember you in my prayers and ask the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, to give you the Spirit who will make you wise and reveal God to you so that you will know him. I ask that your minds may be open to see his light so that you will know what is the hope to which he has called you. How rich are the wonderful blessings he promised his people and how very great in his power at work in us who believe. This this power working in us is the same as the mighty strength which he used when he when he raised Christ from the dead from death and seated him at the right side of the heavenly world. Christ rules there above all heavenly rulers, authorities, powers, and lords. He has a title superior to all titles of authority in the, <clears throat> in this world and in the next. God put all things under Christ's feet and gave him to the church as supreme lord over all things. The church is Christ's body, the completion of him <clears throat> who himself completes all things everywhere. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite you to stand as you're able. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory to you, you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, And I myself will send upon you what my Father has promised, but you must wait in the city until the power from above comes down upon you. Then he led them out of the city as far as Bethany, where he raised his hands and blessed them. As he was blessing them, he departed from them and was taken up into heaven. They worshipped him and went back into Jerusalem, filled with great joy, and spent all their time in the temple, giving thanks to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, especially as we give thanks and, and praise and honor for the ascension of Jesus to sit at your right side, to intercede for us, to take our human flesh with the marks of the cross and the wounds that he suffered and to present them before you as the perfect sacrifice and to plead for our forgiveness. Father, as we worship this morning, we simply ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be now and always acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. There was a little Roman Catholic nun named Sister Faustina who was in Poland uh, before, well, leading up to World War II. And she spent a great deal of time in the chapel where she was in, in the convent that she was placed in praying. It was one of the gifts that God had given her was uh, not only a, a willingness, but 
uh, insights that he would give her as she prayed. And during one of these times of spending time with the Lord in prayer, the Lord gave her a vision that was horrible. It, it, it shattered her, her whole concept of what is and, and what is to be. He showed her a vision of judgment. If the world did not change its ways, if the world did not turn from its sinfulness. Miss Linda, you okay? You would stay there. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. I've got a charge mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, something. That is not comfortable. <laughs> that is but not. I know that. You need to walk. No. Are you sure? Yeah, I just have to get it straightened out. Do you want us to try to get a softer chair? No. Are you good. sure? I'm fine now. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. You just yell if you need, okay? Okay. Thank All right. You. All right. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, it's going to be a short message anyway. Today is about celebration, not about being long-winded. Uh, as, she, as she prayed... The Lord showed her the unleashing of, a, of an angel of destruction. I think, and, and a lot of people think, that not only did it have to do with the sins of the world, it also had specifically to do with the sins that were about to be unleashed upon the world by Hitler and others. And of course, being there in Poland, it was the first country that Hitler fired on when he started World War II. Not long after, in fact, I think almost immediately after, she got on her face before the Lord in that chapel. And she begged for a way for that destruction to be avoided, for the lost souls that would be destroyed to be saved. And the Lord gave her a prayer. And, and this is so Jesus that it's amazing. And it's also so appropriate to Ascension Sunday that I couldn't not use this, okay? And the prayer goes like this. You've seen it in the bulletin from time to time. It's called the Divine Mercy Chaplain. And she, the words that he gave her went like this. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. When Jesus ascended into heaven on the day of the ascension, the feast that we're celebrating today, what happened was more than just Jesus going back to where he came from. It was more than God the Son returning to his, his rightful place on the throne of heaven. He took our human flesh with the scars that are still visible in that flesh, and he took it into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, showing him those very wounds and pleading that our sins might be forgiven because of his sacrifice. The Bible tells us that he intercedes for us. He's our mediator. He is the sacrificial lamb. And he right now is pleading the case for each and every one of us with the Father. If that's not powerful enough, think about this. Every time we gather to worship, whether it's through prayer or singing, through the preaching of the word, or through the, the sharing of the sacraments. Every time we gather, we're doing what Jesus asked Sister Faustina to do, to pray that prayer. Now, we may not be using those words, but we are gathering together and we are saying, Eternal Father, 
I offer you everything that Jesus was and is and continues to be, my Savior, the precious Lamb who bought my salvation. I offer him to you because he is my bridge home to you. And when we gather to worship and when we gather to pray and when we gather to give thanks, that's really what we're saying. Have you ever wondered why it is that the church, when, when we pray, we very often, in, at the end of our prayers, we say, through Jesus Christ our Lord? It's because we are praying to the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And we make our prayers not in our own righteousness, because we're not righteous on our own. We make those prayers through the righteousness of Jesus. And he lifts those prayers to the Father. And in, in the mystery of the Holy Trinity, I don't know how it works, but in the mystery of the Holy Trinity, those prayers are heard. Now, there's a hymn that we're going to be singing in just a few moments. And I really mean this is going to be short today because today is a celebration. I don't want to go on and on and on and on. And I better shut up about going on and on or I'm going to go on and on. <laughs> there's a hymn that we're going to be singing during communion. If you turn with me over to page 11, you'll see there the words to the hymn, Let Us Love and <coughs> Sing and Wonder. This describes, in a way that I have not found any place else, how it is that the working of Jesus brings us home to God, the Father. Now, what we have to remember is that when Jesus died on the cross, he broke the power of sin. When he rose from the dead, he broke the power of death. When he ascended into heaven, he broke, or rather, now let me say it this way, he bridged the chasm that existed between us and God. He took literally our human flesh into heaven, and as the perfect Lamb of God, represents us before the Father. Now, keep in mind that, well, let me just do this. Let's read some of these words, and I'm going to just give a little bit of a commentary as we go, and, and then we're going to wrap this message up for this morning. Let us love and sing and wonder. Let us praise the Savior's name. He has hushed the law's loud thunder, the law of Moses, and has quenched Mount Sinai's flame. He has washed us with his blood. He has brought us nigh to God. Is there any human being alive that could have kept the law of God perfectly? The law that he gave Moses on Mount Sinai? No, of course not. God knew that we were going to fail with that, and God knew that he had to provide a Savior. And that Savior has caused us to sing and wonder and love at the miracle he's done. Why? Because he's brought us home to God. Let us love the Lord who bought us, pitied us when enemies. Why enemies? Because when we were sinners, we were enemies of God. Called us by his grace and taught us, gave us ears and gave us eyes. He opened